We are back on this uh, 2015 Silverado 5.3. So I'm going to read you the ticket that I got. It says, customer notes he was driving home and had a cylinder one misfire. Replaced all plugs except for number eight with NGK Plus. So he didn't replace number eight because it's a pain in the butt to get to. And uh, put NGK Pluses in. They're not the design spark plug, but they're, they're okay spark plug. Uh, the misfire continued. Swap one and three coils and wires for one and seven. So he swapped the one and two, three coils and the wires for one and seven. Basically just dividing the potential causes up amongst other cylinders. And the cylinder, uh, the misfire remained on cylinder number one. Replaced fuel injector in cylinder number one and now symptoms are worse. That's the story that I got on my ticket. So when I got it, um, So when I got it, the uh, I pulled it in, it ran horribly, more than just misfire on number one. But the uh, fuel uh, fuel injector or fuel was spraying underneath the intake, um, so I knew something got messed up when he did the injector. So we pulled off the intake, and fuel spraying out of those tubes. And those tubes are use them once and throw them away uh, fuel tubes. It's, uh, he reused them, they were leaking, so we replaced them. I found an injector that had been damaged when he did it, so we replaced that one injector and replaced all the seals on the uh, on all those injectors on that rail, uh, driver's side rail. The When I pulled the uh, fuel rail up, three of the injectors didn't have any seals on them, so um, they got peeled off when he put them back on, or they got peeled off when I pulled the rail or something but they were missing so the, all the uh, seals got replaced and the uh, one injector that I found damaged um, got replaced so the injector that was damaged the injector that was damaged you can see it's bent there I don't know if, you, if the camera picks that up but uh, the uh, shaft up here is bent so I didn't want to have to try and straighten it and then do more damage or have it fail down the road. So we just replaced it. So it's got two new injectors. Um, there are low flow and normal flow injectors. And I uh, uh, triple checked to make sure that we had the right injectors. Uh, there are a different part number than the other ones that are in there. But uh, everywhere I look, the, uh, these are the normal flow injectors. Um, Got it all done last night, fuel leaks gone, uh, but we are back to a misfire cylinder number one. So we're back to square one, and today we're going to diagnose why uh, cylinder number one is uh, misfire. So let's get on it. All right, so we got a PO300 random misfire code detected. Uh, the I haven't run it long enough for it to really isolate the the uh, exact cylinder, but if we go to live data here, come over to misfires. So. I'm going to start it up and you can watch those misfires count up. So, number one has a dead miss. There's a few on number three, but number one is just counting up. So, and it, you can feel it missing. We've got a flashing check engine light. So, we run it long enough, it's going to count up, but it's going to set that PO301 code. So, uh, we need to decide why we've got a uh, misfire in cylinder one. Um, we're going to retrace some of the steps he already did to make sure we got spark at the cylinder, make sure the spark plug's not cracked or broken. Or uh, Once we are sure, 
we, we're relatively sure we have a good coil or good injector in sonar number one because that's what we did yesterday uh, but we're gonna check for spark once we know we have spark and the spark plug is not obviously damaged we're gonna we'll do a in cylinder compression test and see if maybe our problem is uh, is compression So this is our number one cylinder, coil, wire, plug. So I'm going to, I'm going to pop this off. I've got a spark tester here. I'm just going to put the spark tester on here. That boot there. Just to check and see, make sure we got spark. So I will uh, crank it and you'll be able to see spark in that gap right there. And as you can see, it's got good spark. And that's a, that's a big gap too. That tells us we got a good coil and a good wire without a doubt. Pull that spark plug. The spark plug is completely soaked with gas. I don't know if you can see that, but that's uh, dripping with gasoline. So that's not a good sign. Means our injector's working though. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, do a compression test on it. So we're gonna do a uh, compression waveform on this thing. Uh, the the uh, Number one is not doing anything, so we're gonna we've got our our setup here. I'm gonna show you what I got set up. We're gonna run it for a few seconds and then uh, take a look at the pattern on it, see what kind of have for uh, compression, maybe see some valve events. But uh, let me show you what I got going. I have our the hose in cylinder one with my WPS pressure sensor. And then hooked up it to our Pico, and then I've got uh, I've got a pattern here. Um, that's just a, uh, the initial pattern. I'm going to run it here in just a second and show you what I also find. So it's pretty obvious what's uh, happening here. We've got about six pounds of uh, compression on this thing. Uh, no sense in really even taking a look at it any closer because there's just nothing happening there. What's strange though, here let me put a, uh, put a filter on it and clean it up a little bit. So compression, there's our exhaust stroke. And, you, and to quickly look at it, you'd think, oh, that exhaust stroke's got super high back pressure, but that's, uh, that's zero PSI right there. So the compression is just almost nothing. So there's an exhaust valve uh, opening right there, and there's a, well, I don't know. I don't know that there's a really a, uh, much of a, an intake valve opening. There's, there's something that is uh, wide open on this, on this cylinder. Um, 
seems to me like we've got some valve action on here. I mean, we definitely have an exhaust valve opening. So this thing has been running with uh, an injector malfunctioning for some time. It's possible that the uh, cylinder is washed. The rings are washed, so I can, uh, I'm going to inject some oil into the cylinders and see if maybe uh, we get some compression back. So let me do that and I'll, uh, I'll uh, rerun this test. All right, I, I added oil to that cylinder. I took the tube out, just uh, pumped a few pumps of uh, motor oil into the cylinders. What that'll do if the, if the rings are collapsed because of, uh, they're washed out with fuel, it'll help seal those rings up and we'll get our compression back. Um, don't know if that'll work. Uh, I did notice something weird on the original pattern was we had one bump of 200 PSI pressure and then nothing. So one bump, that tells us something. I'm not sure what it is, but that tells us something. What I'm gonna do with the oil in there, I'm gonna restart this thing and we'll see if our, get, we get our compression back. So, Watch the screen. Let me start this again. Watch. Watch that first bump. I'm gonna wait till the screen gets uh, gets halfway across the screen, and I'll start it. Okay, so you can see this. It has one 220 psi bump, and then goes into nothing. And the oil made no difference. I mean, we're still we're still about five or six psi so but that one bump that that first stroke and it's every time that first stroke we get something all right so i put a uh, uh i put a wps in cylinder three the cylinder right next to it just to kind of compare the two uh so i've got them both on the screen here and i think i figured out our problem um now on this engine, it's got the uh, cylinders that can deactivate, uh, one, four, six, and seven. Number one's our problem, so it is a deactivation cylinder. But I believe I found that the problem is. So what we have here is red is number one, blue is cylinder three. If I zoom in here on, a, on one of the ones that is firing for the most part, Right here is the intake valve activity. So you can see lots of things happening here. You know, the valve opens, it's got, it's got pulsations. That's what's happening inside the intake manifold. You can see it, valve closes right here. Pretty, pretty definite definition. If we zoom back out, and I take a capture of cylinder one, Let me uh, put a filter on that, make it a little easier to see. Okay. If you see here, see how swoopy this thing is? You've got, you've got definition here for your exhaust, exhaust valve opening. Right there is where the exhaust valve opens. You can see it right there. And this is the exhaust stroke. The exhaust, exhaust plateau should be about zero, and you can see here's here's the zero line right here. So it's it's zero. When it comes down here, there's no definition here. There's nothing happening right here. Let me zoom in a little better. Look how swoopy that is. I didn't take valves not opening. That's our problem. I'm going to uh, give you a view of what's happening in that cylinder uh, with my bore scope. I've got it all set up here. I've got the scope in the cylinder through the spark plug hole. 
then I'll uh, I'll roll that engine over. You can see the valve opening, so I'm not sure why we're losing our uh, I'm not sure why we're losing our intake on that thing. But uh, let me uh, show you what I got. Okay, I'm gonna roll this thing over. So right here is the, is the valve. I believe that is the exhaust valve because it's pretty clean. Um, this is the intake valve, and this is the piston coming up. Uh, tough to get a good picture of with the borescope, the way the cylinder is set up. But you can see the piston coming up here, and that valve closing. So that's the end of the exhaust stroke. This thing's going to go past. So right there, top dead center. So that intake valve should have already started to open there. See that? That intake valve should have already been open. There's an overlap that should have happened. That intake valve opens up before top dead center. So now we're, got, we're totally at top dead center. Now we're going to start going back down. And you can see as we start going back down, that intake valve is opening. And you know it's an intake valve because look how dirty it is there. It's full of carbon. But it's way late. But with it opening, I don't know why we're not getting any intake. Unless it's, I mean, it's possible it just could be so plugged up, but I, I doubt that. But we're not getting any intake activity out of that at all. So we're heading down. See, we're still, we're still just started this thing. Look at, we just started that intake pull, or that headed down. We're not even halfway down, that thing's already starting to close. That shouldn't close until we're back, heading back up. So that intake lobe is super, super small, which means either the lobe is bad or the lifter is bad. We're getting just nothing for, See, we're still heading down with a piston and that valve's almost closed already. Okay, now we're starting back up. That valve is completely closed. That shouldn't, that shouldn't close until like 60 uh, degrees after bottom dead center. So our problem is, the, uh, is probably a cam lobe. See, now we're starting to come back up and that valve's been closed for a while. So. That's where we're not getting any intake. It's just open for such a short period of time. It doesn't have any, any time to, to pull vacuum in. So, proof right there, what's wrong? What happens if it can't suck in air, it can't compress air. So, uh, our problem is the intake valve on number one. Uh, it's gonna require the head removal and then we'll uh, uh, take it apart and, and try and figure out what's wrong. More than likely, it's probably something to do with the lifter. Um, uh, super common on those uh, on this, these engines, the lifters fail, uh, and it allow the, that valve not to open. Something else that uh, indicates that it's an intake valve problem, uh, intake valve not opening, is that uh, when I had uh, the spark plug out of cylinder one and I was putting my uh, compression gauge or my compression WPS into cylinder three. I ran cylinder three with number one open uh, because there's no compression. I figured there was not gonna be a problem. But that thing created compression, lots of compression with that spark plug hole open, which means it was using that spark plug hole as the intake valve. Uh, so it pulled that, that air in it through the spark plug hole and um, uh, was it had something to compress so um, our problem is definitely in the intake valve on cylinder number one um, there's a uh, little left to prove on that uh, the waveform shows that there's no action and the fact that the uh, uh, having the spark plug out created that intake pull that it needed to make compression so we're going to write it up for a head removal, 
and probably going to be end up being uh, uh, a camshaft and lifters, uh, at least lifters, but um, likely it's going to need uh, a camshaft and lifters. And we'll uh, we'll pull both heads, obviously, to do the, the lifters, and we'll uh, we always send the heads out whenever they come off the engine. We we send the uh, heads out to have them at least checked, pressure checked, and uh, and, and the valves cleaned. With a bore scope in there, you can see that the backs of the intake valves are super dirty. So it's going to, uh, it's definitely going to get a uh, uh, head work as well. So, so this is a good diagnosis. We're going to uh, write it up. And uh, thanks for watching.